Let's take a look here. So how do we do this in Levon? This is a very clever example. This comes from Yves Rossell. Uh, we, we're going to show you um, how this works. Okay, so we're just going to perform a regression. We're, we're going to mimic the model, the classic model from Barron and Kinney that, that we just we looked at. This um, this this one. And we're going to use the same terms, actually, path A, B, and C. But it's just regression. So we set the seed, uh, and then we use a, a random number generator. Setting the seed, these really are not random. They're pseudo-random. Uh, setting the seed uh, makes it replicable. You get the same result. If you set the seed every time just before you run it, you're going to get the same result. So we set the seed. And then we say, okay, we want 100 samples of a normally distributed uh, uh, random variable, which means, take a look at it, we run it, and x, say take a look at what x is, x will be a vector of 100 values. If you take the mean of x, it'll be really close to 0. And the standard deviation, or the variance, will be very close to 1. It won't be exact, but that's what our norm does. So x is just a normally distributed vector of 100 values. This is the, the uh, independent variable here. OK, and so then we want relationships between m and x and between y and x. So we kind of we fix it. We jury rig it. We say, generate another 100 samples of a random normal variable with a mean of 0 and a variance close to 1. This is going to be different from this set. And then take x and multiply each value by 50% and add it to it. So this is going to fix the coefficient from x to m, the mediator, to be around 0.5. But this is going to add noise. So it's not exactly 0.5. And then we do the same thing here with, with um, y. We, we, we fix y. We, we pretty much. We give it, a, give it a, a significant relationship with the mediator, but then we add a bunch of noise to it here. OK, so, so let's put it in the data frame. And we'll take a look at the data frame. And so we have these three vectors of 100. There's our x is our independent variable, y is our dependent, and m is the mediator. OK, so now we, you can do this, of course, in Levon. You can run a regression. So we, we define our model. Uh, we say, and note we're actually using the same labels for the paths, using the pre-multiplication approach. We're going to pick up this label A, label B, and label C so that we can fit this directly into the model that we just looked at. So Y is going to be c times x. m is going to be a times x. And y is going to be also b. y is going to be b times m plus c times x. And um, note, we also, we use this operator, this special operator in Levon, that enables you to create additional variables to create additional parameters in your model that are products in this case. Uh, we use these with the equality and inequality constraints as well. You can define new parameters that are derivatives of existing parameters. So we're saying this is the indirect effect AB, and we're saying it is A times B. And then we're saying the total effect is, and we just call it total, is going to be C plus the product of A times B. So we do that. There's our model. Now, when you do this, what we really want, we want the standard error of this. Um, and by default, the standard error, if you don't tell it otherwise, will be computed with a non-boots. No, it is a bootstrapped. It's a delta method, the difference, the difference. But it is bootstrapped. Um, you can also, you can use SC equals boot. 
let's see. I, I can't remember. If we'll, we'll find out in a second. Delta, Delta is one approach. That's the default. You can also say SC equals bootstrap, which gives you the bootstrapped approach. And it has a very large number of default bootstraps. I think it's 500. But then you can also use a bias corrected method. So we're going to look at um, three different methods, or at least two. We're going to look at the bootstrap versus the bias corrected. OK, so we fit the model, and we this, this calls the delta method, because we didn't tell it otherwise. So what, we're, what we want to do is we want to look at the significance and the standard error of the of the indirect effect, A, B. So we, we do that, and we look at the summary. But first of all, notice that, notice the regression coefficients. Remember, we wanted the relationship between X and M to be very close to 0.5, and sure enough, it is. And we wanted the relationship, the path coefficient of uh, M on Y to be very close to 7, 0.7, and it is. And um, they are both significant. Now, with respect to Y and, and C, it is not significant in the mediated model. This is the mediated model, which would be indicative of a full mediation. And then uh, here are defined parameters. AB is the indirect effect. And the indirect effect, which is estimated using the delta approach, is significant. And the total effect also is significant. OK, so that's the default approach. Let's do it again. And this time, we will specifically call out uh, uh, estimating the standard error. Let's go back. Where's the standard error? It's right here. Here's the standard error for AB, the indirect effect. We're going to estimate the value of the standard error and the significant and therefore the significance the significance is just the estimate divided by the standard error this number is is walled statistic and it's just it's always just this divided by this okay but now we're going to estimate the standard error we should get the same estimate of of the, of the value of a and b but we're going to boot we're going to bootstrap this and you note that it takes a second, and it takes a long time because it has to, it has to randomly sample. I think it's 500 times. I'd have to check the default number. So it's taking our original set of data. Okay, it's done, and it's resampling with replacement 500 times, running the model, keeping track of all of these values, and then when we run the summary again, it's going to have to think for a bit. So we run the summary, and no, it didn't have to think for a bit. Note that the standard error is a little more narrow, OK? For um, these estimates don't change. The estimate of the regression path coefficients do not change. But we do get a slight deviation uh, here for the estimate of the standard error and for the, to uh, for the, the standard error of the indirect effect of the mediated effect. The standard error for the total effect, let's see, is a little larger. Okay, so it is a little different, but they're still significant. A uh, question here, it says, where would we find the parameters for, for bootstrap in the docs? Uh, I believe if you just, uh, uh, it'd be in the function, be in the definition of the function. Sam, if you question, question mark Sam, you'll get this argument, and there'll be a, de a lot of detail.